Good afternoon. Welcome to the noon briefing. Uh, this morning, the Secretary General received the report from the high-level panel on digital cooperation. The report was handed to him by the panel's co-chairs, Ms. Melinda Gates, co-chair of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, and Mr. Jack Ma, executive chairman of the Alibaba Group. As you may have seen, the online conversation they had right after in which they discussed the findings of the report, which focuses on issues of human rights, human agency, trust, and security in the digital age. The Secretary General said the Digital Cooperation Report is the first step on how we can transform the digital era into an era of digital good for everybody. He added that he is enthusiastic and optimistic of the enormous potential of the digital era, but also about bringing people together to address the risks of technology, and he emphasized the need for digital inclusion, noting that almost half of the world population still has no access to the Internet. And after I'm done, three of the panel members will brief you with more detail on the report, which is now online. This evening, the Deputy Secretary General will travel to Lisbon, Portugal, to deliver the annual Pluralism Lecture 2019, taking place tomorrow and hosted by the Global Center for Pluralism. She will further meet with representatives from government and civil society, as well as faith leaders. The Deputy Secretary General will be back in the office on Thursday, the 13th of June. As we told you last week, the Under Secretary General for Political and Peacebuilding Affairs, Rosemary DiCarlo, is in Saudi Arabia. She held productive meetings in Riyadh today with officials from the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, including Ibrahim Abdelaziz Al Asaf, Minister of Foreign Affairs, and Abdelaziz Hamad Al Washeg, Assistant Secretary General for Political Affairs and Negotiations of the Gulf Cooperation Council. They discussed a wide range of regional issues, including the situation in Yemen. Both expressed their support for the work of the United Nations in Yemen and for the efforts of the Special Envoy of the Secretary General, Martin Griffiths. Mr. Carlo is expected to meet with the President of Yemen, uh, Mansour Hadi, later today. The UN mission in Mali today said that a deadly attack that took place uh, a deadly attack took place yesterday evening in the village of Sobanuku in the Mopti region. According to preliminary information, armed men bro uh, led an attack that left at least 95 people dead and many others wounded. The mission is coordinating its response in support of Malian authorities and the United Nations system in Mali is mobilizing to provide humanitarian assistance to help people affected. The mission also provided air support this morning in support of the Malian government to prevent future, uh, further attacks, and we expect to have a statement from the Secretary General on this shortly. On Sudan, our humanitarian colleagues have noted that the main opposition group has called a nationwide civil disobedience campaign yesterday, with public transport reportedly barely functioning and most commercial banks, companies, and markets closed in the capital Khartoum. Of the 11 main hospitals in Khartoum, half have been closed or partially closed since the 3rd of June. Two major maternity hospitals in Khartoum, which provide maternal health services to approximately 2.5 million people, have also stopped providing services since the 8th of June, leaving some 250,000 women at risk of not being provided with maternity services. The United Nations continues to support hospitals and health centers. The World Health Organization is coordinating with the Ministry of Health and Health Partners on operational issues, including donations and distributions, ambulance services, verification of incidents, assuring security of hospitals, and providing medical supplies. The World Health Organization is also supporting with the providing of meals and transportation to health personnel. On the 7th of June, the UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs set up an emergency operations center in Khartoum to coordinate information sharing, response, logistics, liaison, and planning. The UN calls for rapid and unimpeded passage of humanitarian relief for civilians in need and for the expediting of medical supplies into the country, as well as for faster visa issuance for international staff. In Zimbabwe, the Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator, Ursula Mueller, visited the Chimanimani district yesterday to see firsthand the impact of tropical cyclone Idai and the wider humanitarian and development challenges facing the country. Ms. Mueller saw the devastating level of destruction and spoke with displaced people who have lost loved ones, their property, and livelihoods, and are currently living in temporary shelter with basic services. She also visited a school which was damaged by the cyclone, as well as a food distribution site. She also met with the president and other senior officials to discuss humanitarian needs. The UN mission in Afghanistan has condemned the deliberate targeting of civilians by anti-government elements throughout the holy month of Ramadan, urging all parties to the conflict to protect civilians from harm. There were more than 100 civilian casualties in Kabul alone, resulting from attacks by anti-government elements using improvised explosive devices. 
The Secretary General's Special Representative, Tadamichi Yamamoto, said that, the defin uh, that by definition, these are war crimes and may amount to crimes against humanity. He added that there is no justification whatsoever for any party to the conflict to attack civilians. On Syria, our humanitarian colleagues remain alarmed by the continued intense hostilities in the de-escalation zone in the country's northwest. Over the weekend, artillery shelling and airstrikes continued in Idlib, Hama, and Aleppo governorates. The heightened violence has led to a higher death toll, with at least 180 people having been killed since April, as well as increasing numbers of people fleeing their homes. Since the beginning of April, up to 300,000 people have been displaced, most moving towards Turkey's borders. Camps for the displaced are overcrowded, with many people forced to stay in, uh, stay in the open in fields or under trees. The humanitarian response continues, with tens of thousands of people being reached with food, protection, nutrition, shelter, education, and clean water. The United Nations continues to call for safe, sustained, and unimpeded access to all in need. Any evacuation of civilians must also be safe, voluntary, and to a place of their choosing. It is imperative that any civilians who flee have the right to return as soon as the situation allows. The United Nations calls on all parties to enable the freedom of movement for affected people. In the Security Council this morning, uh, Security Council members met on Libya, and members unanimously adopted a resolution extending the arms embargo on the seas off the coast of Libya for a further 12 months. Members of the Council were then briefed by the Secretary General's Special Representative in Kosovo, Zahir Tanin, who updated members on the current situation in Kosovo, including the events in May, which resulted in mistreatment and arrest of two staff members. Uh, the Undersecretary General for Legal Affairs in the UN's Legal Council also briefed on the same incident, specifically on the topic of immunity. And I want to flag two conferences for you. In Rome, the Food and Agriculture Organization today began its symposium on the future of food, which brings together academics, policymakers, civil society, and businesses to discuss topics such as hunger, obesity, and how to transform our food systems. And in Geneva, the International Labor Organization kicked off its Centenary International Labor Conference, where employers, worker representatives, and governments will discuss issues such as the transformation of jobs and sexual harassment in the workplace. You can find more about these two events online. I have two personnel appointments for you today. The Secretary General is appointing Catherine Pollard of Guyana as the next Undersecretary General for Management, Strategy, Policy, and Compliance. She will succeed Jan Beagle of New Zealand, to whom the Secretary General is deeply grateful for her extraordinary work in management reform in the UN system and 40 years of dedicated uh, service to the organization. Ms. Pollard brings to the position over three decades of experience in human, financial, information communications, technology, and support operations and services, and has a proven record of transformational leadership in the United Nations system. In turn, and succeeding Ms. Pollard, the Secretary General is appointing Moses Abelian of Armenia um, as the next Undersecretary General for General Assembly and Conference Management. He is currently Assistant Secretary General for General Assembly and Conference Management. More on that in our office. And lastly, tomorrow, the 12th session of the Conference of State Parties to the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities begins. We'll have a briefing on that here at 11.15. And then the guests at the noon briefing will be representatives of the elders, Mary Robinson and Ellen Johnson Sirleaf. And that's it for me. Do you have questions? Go ahead, please. Thank you very much. Um, lately, the situation in the Middle East is very tense. Uh, and on the other side, uh, US, Russia, and China is feeding them with guns uh, all the time. Is UN going to do anything before anybody blink there and cause humanitarian disaster uh, in the Middle other, East? Sure. The Secretary General has made his views clear on the state of disarmament. He said more weapons can only cause more problems. He's also, especially in the regions that you're talking about, has continuously urged dialogue to ensure that um, we don't, as he says, sleepwalk into another war. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Ari, uh, just to uh, put a little bit more light on the traveling of uh, Undersecretary Di Carlo to Riyadh, uh, did she have a chance, did, does she has on agenda to talk about the human rights uh, uh, in Saudi Arabia? As we all know, the still actual situation regarding uh, late Khashoggi, journalist Khashoggi. Uh, did he, did she, and uh, will she talk about that? Uh, her meetings are still ongoing, so we'll check with her team to see what issues she raises with them. Also, uh, what about the other 
condemnation to death that all world media is uh, writing that could be happened some of these days that are <clears throat> heavily criticized by human rights monitoring uh, organization. And as you know, the Secretary General personally was criticized about his record on human rights. Did sh he give any order to Mr. Carlo to specifically talk about that or talk to her? I mean, the focus of her visit is on Yemen, but let's see what her team has for us. Yes. Please. Uh, so I would like to go to the issue of uh, Libya and the resolution that was adopted uh, today, 2420. It is very well reported in the media that uh, a lot of the parties to the conflict get weapons from countries that are a member to the Security Council, which steps the Security Council, the Secretary General thinks that the Security Council should take in addition to just um, have another resolution to implement their own uh, resolution. Right. Well, as we just said, you know, the, as we know, um, the Secretary General believes arms are never the answer to any conflict or any situation. Um, and for now, we would urge council members and others to follow the resolutions of the council. But is he asking f f uh, the Security Council members to send ships to, uh, to control or to see if weapons are uh, being uh, delivered to the parties? Is he talking about specific steps? I mean, just to say that uh, we urge all parties to continue, it's not going to help. It hasn't been helping because there was a resolution in place. And the resolution now. has been readopted, so let's see what happens. Margaret. Ari, do you have anything more on this attack in Mopti? Uh, were there any peacekeepers hurt, or were, how fast did they respond? Were, th were there patrols in the area? Like, any more details to, to Our understanding where is they were. responded relatively quickly, but we'll try to get more details. We're, trying to, we're still trying to get some, um, gather some details from the ground. Yes. Thanks, Ari. Um, Sudan's Transitional Military Council has issued a decree demanding uh, that UNAMID hand over its peacekeeping facilities to the Rapid Support Forces. Can you confirm that, and do you have a reaction to it? Uh, yes, the, um, the Transitional Military Council um, uh, has decreed to the uh, African Union UN mission in Darfur, known as UNAMID, to hand over its pre premises as part of our withdrawal uh, next year in 2020 to the Rapid Support Forces, but that is not in keeping with our existing agreement with the Sudanese government and our insistence that the facilities be used solely for civilian purposes. The latest special report of the chairperson of the African Union Commission and the Secretary General makes clear that the end users of all UN installations should be civilians. It is important that UNAMID's premises, once handed over, are used for the benefit of all the people of Darfur and to help build a sustainable peace in the local community. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, my name is Harrison, News Agency of Nigeria. Um, mine is still on the situation in uh, Libya. The embargo is, is uh, breached by uh, 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 members of uh, the Security Council themselves. Doesn't the, the SG think that there is a further uh, uh, dent on the credibility of, of uh, the Council and on the UN? I mean, the, Secretary, uh, the Security Council is the body tasked with the maintenance of international peace and security. So let's see how this embargo uh, shakes out. Stefano. Thank you. Uh, on, uh, this is on Libya, but it's on another aspect. Uh, the um, Human Rights High Commissioner just uh, released a report where they said they are really deeply concerned for uh, the migrants and refugees that disappears after that the Coast Guard, the Libyan Coast Guard, pushed them back in Libya. So there are numbers that they, from people that they intercept and then they, the people that they found back in the camps, and there is a suspicious that they are sold in the human trafficking and those problems. And there is also the news that there are many people that are dying for disease. They are in, the, in those camps that they're curable. I mean, they can take it care of it easily, but they but they die. So uh, this is a UN report. And a part of the report, what the Secretary General and the UN is doing to stop this, that he's uh, a crime against humanity to, to what's happening in Libya, a part of all the problems that Libya has. You know, the Secretary General, um, as you know, has um, 
Uh, we have worked on several compacts, including on refugees and migrants, um, which uh, we hope will bring an end to situations as, um, such as the ones that you've mentioned. Um, and as you've also mentioned, our colleagues in the offices of um, the High Commissioner for uh, Human Rights and Refugees have consistently been flagging this problem, and we hope that we can work with authorities to bring an end to these issues. Uh, Errol, again. Thank you, Ari. Just on Kosovo, uh, as you know, by the end of last year, one of the a permanent member of the Security Council, UK, was presiding with the Council, mentioned that uh, they would like to see Kosovo discussed at the Security Council in another, not open session format. Can you reaffirm the position of Secretary General on that and also on Kosovo? Regarding that incident with the member of UNMIC, uh, what does the Secretary General think or say on the accusation from Kosovo side that the member of UNMIC uh, was uh, actually not doing only, not was engaged only as a member of UNMIG, but in capacity of other things for Russia. You know, on the issue of a format of meetings, we leave that to the members of the Security Council to decide. But um, on the issue of the two UNMIG staff members, you know, we've said what the what they were doing in that location at the time, um, and I think we've. Uh, an investigation is still ongoing, as the special representative told the council members today. So we'll wait to see what the um, final investigation is. Um, Michelle. Thank you, Ari. A question on Yemen. Um, the Yemen, Yemeni foreign minister has um, reportedly submitted his resignation um, and it apparently has something to do with uh, some of the officials in the Yemeni government have criticised him for not criticising the special envoy Martin Griffiths enough. Um, there was also that letter, I think, last month from the Yemen government um, to the SG criticising Martin Griffiths. Does the SG still have confidence in Martin Griffiths? Yes, we still have full, the Secretary General still has full confidence in, um, uh, in his Special Envoy Martin Griffiths uh, regarding the situation in Yemen. Uh, Hi, I wanted to bring up the World Conference of Ministers Responsible for Youth in Lisbon on June 22nd and 23rd. Uh, we have the idea that the Special Representative for Youth will be there. And uh, the Secretary General himself was also invited by the Portuguese government. I wanted to know if there is a, an answer for that invitation and if we can get a statement from the Secretary General about the conference. Uh, at this moment, we have no uh, travel to Lisbon to confirm, but if we do, we will let you know. Thank you. Yes. On Libby, uh, can you clarify, you said embargo on, on the ports. Does that include east and west and south borders or just a port? Oh, on that, I'd ask you to look at the, the resolution closely. <laughs> so it's not, it's not our resolution, so we'll, um, we'd ask you to check the resolution. Thank you. Yes. Um, on the meeting of Ms. Di Carlo uh, with the Saudi officials, did she uh, talk about, uh, did she bring up the issue of uh, Sudan, given the fact that uh, Saudi officials have influence on the military council there? and they met uh, before the latest events uh, and the massacre. Um, yeah. um, at this point, the meetings are still ongoing. She just arrived and started the meetings today, so um, we'll try to get more clarity on the substance of the meetings and let you know. Okay, thank you very much. Monica. 